Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy Pettis and this is my good friend colleague Steve Edelman. We're both endocrinologists living with type 1 diabetes and we work for the not-for-profit Taking Control of Your Diabetes, TCOID, joined by our other good friend and colleague Aaron Kowalski who is the CEO of Breakthrough T1D. So we're doing this video on exercise. So Steve, why are we doing this video? Why is this important? Yeah, I think one of the hardest things for us type ones to do is to control our blood sugars during exercise. And there are so many variables. What kind of insulin system you're on, you know, what kind of intensity and duration of exercise, and are you want to avoid lows, but you also do not want to go through the roof. So it's tough, it takes a lot of thought. Yeah, and people, you know, assume sometimes we have perfect blood sugar controls, right? You're the CEO of Breakthrough T1D for crying out loud. We're endocrinologists for a zillion years. I have highs, lows during exercise, probably more than anything else. I follow you. You really mess Thanks, up. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to break this down into kind of planning before you exercise, maybe some tips and tricks during exercise and then a recovery period. But before we do that, just some overarching ideas that, you know, are concepts that people should know for exercise. So one that I think is probably the, one of the most important things that doesn't get talked about enough is the time of day that you actually do your exercise. So it's very different if you do a cycle class in the morning versus in the evening. Um, in general, people are more insulin resistant in the morning, so it's, it's a little bit harder to go low, which makes it a little bit easier to go high sometimes. And in the evening, you're more insulin sensitive, so you might be more prone to hypoglycemia. So I, you know, I do do spin classes and have started doing them in the morning and found just shifting the time of day has really helped to, you know, avoid lows. Do you guys, time of day? Time of day is huge. And I, I, the way I always think of exercise is I always think of rule number one, number two, and number three are, it's all about insulin on board. And the time of day for me and the way to uh, kind of know your insulin on board best is in the morning. Yeah. Because you haven't just eaten. You know, every meal bolus you give, you have those tails. So I run a lot and I never worry about going low when I run in the morning. I don't eat breakfast. I go out and run first uh, because I know how much insulin I'm going to have on board. And it makes it immensely easier than like my son ran cross country and track in high school, had a type one teammate. Very, very difficult. First thing in the afternoon they were running. They, she had her meal bolus on from lunch and she really had to work hard not to go low. So time of day, critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, I, I, when I can, I do it that way. But on the weekends, I do these long bike rides. For me, it's, you're right, it all relates to insulin, is setting your exercise settings early. Mm -hmm. People say to me, oh, yeah, I still get low during exercise. I put on exercise mode, and then I go run. You know, you, you have insulin on board. So you're right, Aaron. It's all, it's all about how much insulin is hanging around. Yeah. yeah, and we'll get, I think, a little bit more into that, kind of like the pre-exercise. Other general concept that I think is really helpful is, the type of exercise makes a big difference. It's kind of how I, like, I think about like alcohol. People will say, well, what does alcohol do to your blood sugar? It depends if you're drinking a pina colada or a shot of rum. Same amount of alcohol, but different carbs. And we and do that like early that. in the morning too. I so. always <laughs> like to mix alcohol into our talks whenever I can. Um, but a run is very different than a walk. Um, you know, these kind of like right. slower exercises might make you go low. But running, you can get your adrenaline going. Sometimes that can make you go high. So it's you, it's not a simple question to answer. How does exercise affect my blood sugar? Yep. Generally, the higher cardiovascular, you know, getting your heart rate things up can can make you go a little bit higher. And the weightlifting, the walking, these slower things can make you go, you know, lower. Broadly speaking, so time of day, type of exercise, kind of general concepts. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, you know, run this morning, like walk us through maybe how you would start preparing. Is it the night before you think about it, the, the morning of? When yeah, you get... to me, it's, it's really about uh, preparation is key. As Steve pointed out, the insulin on board, it takes an hour to 90 minutes to change your basal rate. So I'm always thinking about how much insulin am I going to have on board? There's kind of two levers you can pull. Insulin on board and having your carbs ready for mm -hmm. when, you, when you're in the moment. And Beforehand, I'm, it, again, it's, to me, it's all about how much insulin is in my system. Well, so let's say uh, I'm going to run in the evening where I might have insulin on board. I have to have that other le lever ready. Like, mm -hmm. do I have, I carry su Swedish fish, which are uh, super carby. And it takes I like an hour quickly. to eat one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Not if they're fresh. Okay. Uh, uh, so 
But you have to, like, I always think that people do it wrong so much of the time. They take their pump off right before they exercise. Mm-hmm. You still have all that insulin on board. Then they put it on, so they go low, and then they go skyrocketing because they have a gap of insulin mm-hmm. when they're exercising. You got to plan ahead because it's uh, uh, you're going to go low yeah. if you have that insulin in your system. Yeah, not much to add, but you got to set your, do your settings early. And I would say the other thing that, like you said, the other toggle is carbs. Sometimes what people can do is they exercise later in the day is intentionally under bolus for the meal prior. And that's a way I think it kind of conceptually helps people too of instead of using all this insulin to combat these carbs, I'm going to use half as much as I usually do, kind of intentionally go a little bit high and then work that off, work that blood sugar down, especially if you're trying to lose weight, things like that, that can be like mentally helpful, I think. But you know, Jeremy, I, I agree with that, but the, the, you have to have the timing is right. It's, and, and you're right. It, and that, so that happens difficult. and then you don't get to exercise and, and you're, then like, you're now on 300. Yeah. So we get it. But yeah, like, these are the hard. things that you have to play around with. Yeah. So pre, like preparing for it a couple hours before, limiting the insulin on board for your exercise in general. What about during? Again, it, it depends on, on what's, you know, what exercise you're doing. But let's go back to you when you're on a run. How often are you looking at your CGM? Like what like changes are you making during the run? Yeah, I am looking somewhat regularly. You know, if I'm flat and cruising along and doing a regular run, I probably am not looking at it as frequently. But if I'm dropping or if I'm rising, I'm going to be looking more. Uh, and I'm always making sure I have a carb source somewhere yeah. nearby to make sure if, when in you case I drop. To take those selfies, and you can really <laughs> check your blood sugar out. You know what? During is not as hard for me. I yeah. mean, I, you, I listen for my alerts. And sometimes if I do it right, I don't even look. I just wait for it to be too high or too low. Uh, but having a CGM is just key. Looking yeah. at those trained arrows and having fast acting uh, you know, carbohydrates. I like goo, but we all have our favorites. Can I, Jeremy, tell you one other trick that I always use, and it kind of, kind of comes back to pre and during, is I will not bolus with my pump. I'll use a Frezza because the Frezza comes in and out of your system so fast. I know this isn't for kids, but for adults who like to exercise and need to eat something, not having that tail, tremendously helpful mm-hmm. for me. Totally agree. Yeah. I'll just say about the carb source, you know, I just like, I do these these cycle classes and I go into the cycle class every day with this bottle of, of apple juice, you know, just like with me. And finally somebody asked me the other day, why do you always have apple juice? And you, you never really drink it. Like it was just in case, you know, for low yeah. blood sugars, things like that. But Swedish fish, I'll give that one a try. <laughs> so, all right. So hopefully you planned ahead, you exercised, your run went well. Um, I think the post-exercise period is something that people don't think about as much. And for me, when I used to run or even cycle, what would happen is my blood sugars would generally do okay, and then I would stop running or cycling, and then my blood sugars would go through the roof. So why does that happen? Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing phenomenon. I'll tell you a quick story. I ran the New York City Half Marathon, perfect blood sugar. I'm like, oh, I'm so good. This is amazing. Finished at like 120, got on the subway, took a 25-minute subway ride with only water, 300 plus when I got to the end of that subway ride. And what's happening is your liver is dumping sugar into your system. Because it's trying to fuel your muscles. Often you have lower insulin in your system. You may turn your basal rates down, take off your pump. And that all adds up to potential for seriously high blood sugars. So I'll tell you, we were, uh, when we were JDRF, we did an exercise program. And we learned a lot from the Team Novo guys uh, and gals, the people who uh, had the similar problems. It was a cycle team. The right? cycle team, yeah. the professional cycle team are all type 1s. What they found is those uh, post-exercise highs can be really reduced with like a very short cool down, like a walk around the block, a little spinning at the end of your class. Of course, you've got to look at your insulin levels afterwards because you probably do have low insulin and take that into consideration, but it's hard. You're hungry, you're tired, you want to eat something. That Uh, has been like the most helpful thing to me because honestly, who wants to do that? You're done with the cycle class or running or whatever. Now, like, I got to walk for 20 minutes or stretch <laughs> or whatever. It is so helpful because you're just, I just tell people it's kind of, you're bringing your body back into the regular world yeah. instead of just like, running and stopping, you're allowing some of that glucose to get sucked up, stopping your run a couple blocks early, staying on the bike for another 10, 15 minutes. Super, super helpful. You know, I learned that from you. When, yeah. I, when I get towards the end of my long cycle rides, I'll stop, turn off my, my exercise settings. So I'm back to the regular insulin delivery. And then I do, you know, a a cool down period over the last 30 minutes. So 
It, thank you. Well, you're welcome. I probably <laughs> learned it from there. But um, so I think this is all information that hopefully is helpful. Um, it is very difficult, trial and error. You know, we all still stumble with this. But when you're armed with a little bit of this information, it can help make your numbers make sense. Yeah. And then you can start kind of, you know, intervening to try to make them a little bit better. So keep up the good fight. Keep exercising. Thanks, guys, for doing this with us. And uh, thank see you in the next one.